Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. In our first segment, a member of the Bloomers in the Garden team called the hotline and asked about leaves being shaken from a tree. Aaron's second part of his call asked about using his mower to mulch his leaves. Is that a problem? Find out in our second segment. People love growing fresh figs, but these borderline hardy trees need special special winter protection. Hear how to protect your fig tree in our third segment. Feeding wild birds is one of the most popular hobbies in the U.S. We're talking all about it in our fourth segment. Drop the head shears and back away. <laughs> Julio and I are giving you some time off in our final segment. So stay tuned and join us in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 915-3 contains five micronutrients which are designed for azaleas and evergreens to provide the proper nutrients and producing stunning green leaves and essential new growth while protecting the plant from damaging insects for up to eight weeks. Fertilum's Azalea and Evergreen Food contains 9% nitrogen for green growth, building bigger stems and leaves, 15% phosphorus for root growth and increased flower production, 13% potash to promote vigorous growth so plants are better able to resist disease and cold. The micronutrients are the icing on the cake to enhance further growth, Strengthen and beautify color. Tired of seeing your plants prematurely drop their leaves, the flowers disappear? Fertilums Azalea Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 contains an easy-to-apply insecticide that keeps your azaleas and evergreens looking great all year long. Those hungry insects do not have a chance. Apply in spring before bud sprout and continue throughout the season as indicated on the label growing guide. Fertilums Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic Insecticide 91513 with micronutrients is a must for the passionate Azalea and Evergreen grower to help produce that beautiful abundance of color and fantastic fragrance everyone will love. So next time you visit your favorite garden center, pick up Fertilums Azalea and Evergreen Food plus Systemic and expect to have the best looking shrubs in the neighborhood. Smeltzer and Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mastardi Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome, everybody, to Bloomers in the Garden. We received a two-part call on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. And the amazing thing is that that caller is right here in the studio. (laughs) Right, Aaron? (laughs) There he is, Aaron, my man Aaron. Thank you for being here, Aaron. Listen to his first part. Hey, Julio, how you doing, man? This is your boy, Aaron, calling from Berlin, man. 
couple questions I wanted to kind of shoot off the both of you uh, while the opportunity was in front of me. I saw a giant truck with a boom arm the other day shaking a tree very violently. And uh, within five seconds, the tree looked like it had put on its birthday suit. I mean, it was completely <laughs> bare. I mean, it, I'm just wondering, is that healthy for the tree to have the tree, you know, the leaves shaken off before they actually fall off naturally? I don't know. I'm thinking of business. <laughs> All right. Aaron, explain. Did it hit it, hit the tree by accident, or did it shake it on purpose? So uh, there was a a tree cleaning crew, or, uh, you know, they were out there on the streets, uh, I guess, getting up to breaking cr- leaves. Breaking leaves. Yeah. They had a couple, couple trees out, um, I guess, that were the branches and all of that were kind of like falling over into the middle of the street. And so I guess the township had, you know, pulled in some, <laughs> they pulled in some, basically some, you know, some trucks to kind of, you know, clean up the trees was it, and situation. Was it the town's trucks? It was Washington Township out there. However, okay. I do not oh. know the name of the uh, the tree removal crews okay. or anything so like that. Would, so I don't know if it was They hired a separate, separate I do believe so. cut. Did, were they cutting stuff down? I didn't see them cutting the trees. I just saw, uh, I just saw a guy inside a bucket. I saw another arm reaching out, shaking trees. I, I was wondering shaking if, <laughs> and it was leaves everywhere on the ground. So, and they had, you know, they had the chipper and they had a bunch of different things out there. Uh, it seemed like a pretty big operation, you know, it seemed and like it, a pretty big operation. And it was the intent to shake the tree. I believe it was. I believe it was because oh. they had, it was, it looked literally like, like your boom microphone and mm-hmm. it, it pulled up to the tree and it collapsed, you know, got onto the bark of the tree and it just shook it. How about for, that? For a good a good five seconds. Wow. I love my hometown, but I think that's a waste of tax dollars. <laughs> 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 that's amazing. I mean, yeah. What we were going to talk about was that how in <laughs> nut production, like right. almonds, for instance, right. they use those shakers to drop all the almonds at one time, right. and then they they pick them up. <laughs> Walnuts, same thing. Pecans. And that they actually have this thing that come out like an, an upside down umbrella mm-hmm. that catch all, all of the stuff, nuts yeah. in in the depending on what the type of nut they're gathering. Right. Um, but I didn't realize that our was... town has a tree shaker. Right. That's pretty. It, it might not have been a township. It might have been. Yeah. I'm, like I said, the township was out there. I do like, believe it might have wow. just been. You know, they were. It was the weekly. You know, they came in sweeping up the leaves and things like that. But I think um, just by looking at it now, I do think that it could have been, you know, purposely purposefully done done so that they could, you know, save time on cleaning leaves and things like that down the line. And the guy in the bucket truck, was it a separate truck? It was it was the same truck. It was it was it was a truck that had a a boom arm and he was kind of on the top of the truck in the rear. And um, he had a it was like a boom arm. That reached directly out to the tree, right? Clamped on, shook the tree for Hit five tree. seconds, and, oh my gosh, and all the leaves that. fell off. Wow. And a lot of them were still green. You know, it didn't but, even yeah. appear that the leaves had kind of Come changed <laughs> too many. You know, too much color. So that's why I was wondering. I'm like, I can't be too healthy for the tree. If I mean, it could I, be. Uh, I don't know. A couple it's weeks like, ago, we did the show on why trees change color and, okay. and all, and that when a leaf falls from a tree there's a series of cells that where it's attached to the branch and that those cells just callous over and separate themselves from the leaf and the leaf just drops Hmm. now i mean if (laughs) if they're doing that i think that's actually a really cool service because nothing is worse like for instance if anybody has a pin oak they know they're going to rake up all their leaves now, yeah. and then all of a sudden in the spring, they fall again. And <laughs> I, they're a great tree, but they actually fall twice. So, you know, that they they overwinter with some on them. Well, let's, you get a winter storm, and you hope they blow all off. <laughs> That's amazing. But yeah. wow. to watch the process when they're harvesting nuts, though, is pretty I mean, it's yeah, pretty, pretty violent. I mean, it is. I mean, it must have made the ground shake and everything. Well, I was driving by, so I didn't, you know, I didn't feel yeah. it. But yeah. I do know it. The, the way that the tree moved, it it's pretty uh, it was amazing, huh? <laughs> definitely crazy, right. like, to say the least. Because I was just amazed. It was just like the tree was there and it was gone. It was, it was like bare, <laughs> it was bare, and then the snap <laughs> of a finger. Right.
<laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I, I think that that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, pretty where cool. Yeah, yeah. where those of you, like me that hate raking leaves yeah. Yeah. Um, don't once, right? <laughs> yeah, don't 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 like it. Um, I would assume that it's safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to see it tackle my, I guess, my oak tree that's at Bloomers. That oh, that tree's got to have almost oh. two foot. Yeah, yeah, that truck's that, gonna shake. That gonna tree's shake. not gonna not shake. going anywhere. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're talking about a small tree, right? I get the concept. <laughs> yeah, I get the concept, and and again, it, yeah, that's a you know a taxpayer owned piece of equipment. <laughs> Can you come over to my house and take care of that? So, so they must have gotten they must have gotten the idea, Len, from these uh, gr- you know these farmers. Yeah. don't you think? I guess. Yeah, they saw him. They saw them shaking those leaves down. Or somebody's got a brother-in-law that sells those things, and they, you know, <laughs> and, and knows somebody, you know, in the uh, let's just say they, I don't know, what would it be, the public works public department? Works yeah. yeah, I guess the the whole idea and the concept. Now that I look at it, for that would be. I, I mean, I was assuming that leaves, you know, to sh- to conserve the trees, you know, they they drop the leaves, correct, over the winter, right. Yeah. To, to conserve water and resources for the trees throughout I, the winter? Naturally, they've been doing it for an awful long time without tree shakers. Gotcha. Okay. You know? but, okay. but it's still, I guess it's not having to have the labor to come back and take care of it. Like, That's you know, true. if they were doing it in a park or doing it park, where yeah. it's, you know, publicly owned land. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> I hear an investigation. <laughs> but again, great concept. Hopefully, you know, it was something that was not, uh, maybe they had to get to something that was around the tree. Like if you're trying to do wires or something. Could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Could be, you trying know? to clean it up. Yeah. yeah, that they had to like cut it out because mm-hmm. it was too close to wires or right. something that and they didn't want the, I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Interesting. It's amazing. Yeah. I didn't even know it existed outside of yeah, har- a tree f- production or harvesting, harvesting you yeah. know, uh, like farmers. Farmers do. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's quite amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Interesting. Now, you've got another question that's going to be coming up in our next yeah. segment. Oh, yeah. uh, this is, this is going to be a little more detailed. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We'll be right back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other compost, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Sickles Market, Little River, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. You're invited to celebrate the holiday season with us at Bloomers. We're proud to announce that the Bloomers Holiday Preview Party is back. Join us for an evening of festive holiday fun, including a ton of refreshments and festivities all over the store. We've got Higby's Heroes, the Acapella Quartet, returning to spread holiday cheer through song, bringing joy to both the young and the young at heart. This event is topped off with wine tasting for the 21 and up crowd, special offers, prizes, and more. Join us on Friday, November 18th at 5 p.m. for the Bloomers Home and Garden Center Christmas Preview Holiday Party. You don't want to miss 
miss the biggest event of the season at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, 344 Herfield Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. For directions or more information, check us out on the web at bloomers.com. And we look forward to celebrating the holiday season with you in the garden. Happy holidays! You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. If I didn't make it clear in our last segment, I hate breaking leaves. I just hate it. It's not fun, the pile, jumping in. No, no. Uh, my kids are all in their late 20s or early 30s. Yeah, they're, so They're done. Yeah, they're done. And that, uh, that was, no more, uh, we, uh, you know. We didn't do that as a family because I never raked the leaves. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but there are a number of trees, and, and actually I have a couple of these, where the leaves just dry up and blow away. So, but it appears that, unfortunately, Aaron does not have any of those leaves. Here, listen to the second part of his call. Second part of uh, my question, uh, Miss, in regards to still leaves, um, but more so around leaf removal. I sent you guys a picture. Picture got, The pictures I sent actually arose uh, out of laziness of me not wanting to <laughs> blow or bag the leaves in my backyard. What you'll see is my backyard filled with leaves. However, I mowed down with my lawnmower to see if I could compost the leaves a little bit and uh, hope the good Lord <laughs> blows his mighty winds upon my backyard to make those small shards of leaves kind of unnoticeable. Are there any long-term issues that I need to be concerned about if I left them on the ground and not blew them away? Um, you know, granted, you know, no major wind uh, takes the little pieces away. And if not, uh, what's the thickest layer that that compost should be, so to speak, of? Thanks, thanks, guys. I appreciate that in, in advance and forward to seeing you guys at that preview party in the ah, garden. Have a good one, guys. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, well, unless Moses comes in and parts the leaves, <laughs> yeah, really, <laughs> to walk on dry land. Um, so, Julio, it's uh, mm. if you have a mulching blade on your lawnmower, which it looked like you did. Yeah, I mean, when you like went it. by, there was nothing left. And that uh, the picture that that Aaron sent is that you know it was. Just there was only a small covering of leaves, right? Right, and that that's not an issue. So, so they say twenty percent hmm. of your lawn being covered, you can mulch them up. The only thing that it does, it it will add, and yeah, it's a little compost and add a little bit of nutrient value to your lawn. Right. Not a whole heck of a, a lot. lot, but it will add to the thatch layer, and then right. you'll eventually thatch your lawn and rake up the thatch so you're going to end up raking the leaves Again. eventually anyway. <laughs> yeah. But if you hate raking leaves as much as I do, yeah, that's my preferred method. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, but if you do, if you have like 50% coverage, mm -hmm. like, or more, then it's getting a little thick. You want to make sure that they're in small enough pieces to where they will work themselves into the into the grass. If um, if not, the problem is you can't have it sitting on top of it because it will smother that grass. It'll add uh, possible disease issues that like any snow mold or or any of the the fairy ring or things different diseases that happen when there's not enough air circulation around your your grass blades. Um, but again, maybe it takes a couple of passes to make that happen. And you asked about uh, like thick, you know, if, if it's really thick, they just thick. all, they gotta be they raked gotta be up. Raked. Yeah. There's and, no way around that. Yeah. It just, um, uh, you know, it, there are other issues. Julio, how many times in spring mm. do we have people bring in, say like a, mm. 
Acer rubrum, like a regular native red maple leaf that right. has like little spots little on spots it. On it. Yep. Right? Oh, yep. And Let's it's and it's a bacterial, bacterial leaf spot. Problem. And what happens is when those leaves fall, they can, they can infect the tree again. Mm. If you rake them out, then yeah. you don't have that issue. Problem, yeah. uh, we see that a lot, not only mm -hmm. in maples, but we see it also. Um, really, it's uh, Bradford pear. pear yeah, no, Bradford no. pear all the time. And they're just annoying spots on the leaves that generally don't kill the the tree or, or anything. It just makes it unsightly. Yeah. And also, anywhere there's a spot, there's not going to be food production. So, eh, mm -hmm. you know, something to think about. Mm -hmm. If you have roses, uh, no. Yeah. Yep. Break those leaves up. Get them up. Mm -hmm. um, any plants that you've struggled with disease issues, and we're talking about gardens, too. If you've had a foliar disease issues in the garden, make sure you're not just turning that over. I would get rid of um, those plants, compost them. They need to break down over time with heat so that it makes the it kills off the pathogen. Uh, so you don't want to, you know, just kind of ride your lawnmower over them. Uh, but that's the only case. But if you got twenty percent, eh. eh. Go over them. Do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you've got right. thirty to forty percent, go over them go twice. Over twice. Yeah. <laughs> Anything more than that, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to rake up. Oh yeah. Um, it's been beautiful raking weather. You've got two kids. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, Get right. out there. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Enjoy, Enjoy it. it. It's fun. <laughs> you do yeah. the Tom Sawyer thing, like painting the fence. When they jump in the leaves, it's fun. Yeah. With yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> no jumping in the leaves until you've made a pile. <laughs> All right. But we mentioned about trees that do blow away. Ginkgo. Right. Ginkgo, real easy. Ginkgo. I, I was in um, the Poconos, yeah. and there was an enormous, at Sh was it Shawnee Hotel or something like that, up in the Poconos? Mm -hmm. There was an enormous ginkgo tree and the leaves were coming down oh, yeah. but it was beautiful and that they get that lemony color right. and yeah, it's like a like fan yeah, uh, some people say oh they're a prehistoric tree because yeah, prehistoric. in a lot of the different digs and stuff that they find right. that fan-shaped leaf from a ginkgo so it's been around for i don't know right depending on, on what your theory is a long time let's just put it that way <laughs> right. since time began, began. when that back. started mm -hmm. you can choose um bald cypress bald, another one bald cypress mm -hmm. ha look like a deciduous conifer mm. yeah that's that's impressive <laughs> that's, that's an impressive <laughs> line isn't it, it is. what that basically means is that the the tree looks like its foliage looks like a um, an evergreen, but actually it is a deciduous Did tree. Red buds. Red, oh yeah. Red oh, buds. Yeah. Is nice little heart shaped heart leaf. Shaped, yeah. Another one that's Another one. Uh, easy on the rake. Mm -hmm. uh, and locust. Locust. Yeah, locust are are a big shade big. tree. Do do really well. Right. Larger the leaf, the more likely you're going to have to to rake it up. Rake it out. Yeah. So. There are trees out there. So anybody put in a new tree, consider some of those before you um, go right to a maple or go right to an oak. Oak are tough because they, uh, they're they known, first of all, for the hard wood that's inside. But those leaves are just as hard that they take a long time to, to break down. So just saying. <laughs> just saying. Julio, anything to add to that? No, I'm another one that doesn't like to rake now. You don't like to rake? No, I don't yeah. like to rake. Why? But I don't get too many. Uh, I don't have too many trees around me, so uh, it's not a problem. Got a Frank Linnea tree. I, I do, yeah. But yeah. that blows away pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. They have small leaves. Beautiful tree. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful tree. Red, nice and red right there. Yep. Um, all right, we'll all be right. right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, 
we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and EcoPeat. EcoPeat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniels Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Smeltzer and Sun Feed Supply, Route 9, Cape May, New Jersey. Mastardi Nursery, Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Herfel Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, you know, Len, it's that time of year where it's, uh, we're getting t- close to winter, and it's going to get colder, I think, uh, next week, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yes. It is. So it's time to uh, protect your fig tree. Time. Like, yes. You like figs, you said, right? I do like figs, yes. Yeah? Yep. The brown turkey fig is the one normally that we sell. That's right. I, said, I mean, tell me, tell what? I don't, you don't eat figs. You don't eat figs? No. Aaron, do you eat figs? <laughs> nope. Nope. What's He's bad, not a what's the matter you folks? Brett, do you eat figs? <laughs> I don't even know what figs are. Uh, <laughs> fig Newtons? <laughs> fig Newtons, that's right. I'll eat a fig Newton. Yeah, I'll have one of those, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah? You don't like the uh, but, actual But figs? real figs. I mean, yeah. you don't peel it, right? No, I just pop it in my mouth. And then, but it like pops when you, when you, well, it does when you eat a fig Newton. Yeah. It's like, it's like <laughs> cool. sandy kind of, but it's not sand. It, it, it's like bubble wrap. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Looks like a Hershey's kiss to me. <laughs> a giant one, that's yeah, for sure. One, yeah. I'll tell you off air what it looks like to okay. me. But anyway, um, all right, my friend. So I mean, it's a feat of engineering. It is, which some it is. of people do yeah, to is, protect their figs, especially when you go where? <laughs> when well, you South say. Philly. Yeah, you go right. in South Philly. You peek around the, the the row homes there. Every once in a while, you'll see this thing. It looks like. You know, it looks like Elon Musk is sending another rocket up, <laughs> and and it's amazing. It it's is. amazing. Yeah, it's um, really cool, isn't it? So, so what you have to do is, I may not eat figs, but I certainly have talked to our customers over the years enough to tell them how to take care of it. Mm-hmm. The trick is making it in layers, almost like how insulation is in the walls of your house. Mm-hmm. Okay. So first thing you need to do, make sure all the leaves are falling off. You don't want uh, you don't want any leaves left on it. Uh, prune and this is a time to clean it up and prune. Uh, where you want to prune out any crossing or rubbing branches, right. you want to prune them out. You want to make sure that it's got a lot of air circulation. So when it starts to grow, the following spring, that it's going to give you the most production that you can get. Um. <laughs> I tease you all the time. <laughs> Julio, uh, what yeah. do you need to go to the Walgreens to go buy to, <laughs> the, go for to the Walgreens. first step? <laughs> I don't go to Walgreens. <laughs> uh, you don't go to Walgreens. <laughs> you go get to pick. Well, uh, unless you have them in your drawer already. You need no, I stockings. <laughs> I don't have stockings. <laughs> you don't have stockings? Are no. you sure? No, <laughs> you know? I have socks. <laughs> you have socks. All right. We're talking about nylon stockings, yeah, right. okay? You might have no, stockings. No, I don't have any stockings, okay. Julio. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not in your cross testing days. You no. don't have any stockings. <laughs> no, All right. So. All right. So what you do is, is you use the stockings because mm-hmm. it doesn't create a, a point to where you can girdle the plant. 
and that it's nice and it's soft to where you can gather up those branches and you want to do it. In multi- it's not like you're going to do one tie of these stockings, you know, you know, buy, buy a few and buy the cheapest ones uh, and that you're going to just use it to spread the point of contact on the branch and you're going to create a basically fold it from the bottom and keep going up to the top so that you're almost creating that, you know, rocket Rock kind of look. look. Yeah. And, and and that's the first step. Mm-hmm. And then twine, you're going to use twine. and But if you take out some of that um, where the tree wants to open up naturally, but you're going to almost like, you know, you get those, you get your Christmas tree and they put a net on it and mm-hmm. it folds all the branches in. That's right. basically what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're yeah. trying to fold those branches in. But it's got to be done in layers because, again, it, its figs have tender branches, and you don't want to be tying string or right. nylon string especially. But that goes on after the stockings, and, again, it just helps cinch it up a little tighter. Mm-hmm. Now, here comes a good okay, <laughs> you are going to have a, the, the branches all bundled together. Nice and tight. All secure. And now you're going to build a frame out of usually bamboo or even metal stakes. And you're going to build that frame. And you can take chicken wire. I mean, it's getting crazy. But if you like figs, you'll do this. Okay. And you're going to take the chicken wire and you're going to build a cage around it. Mm -hmm. And that each where, where it's tied, you're going to wrap it. And it should always taper so that it has that closed in the top is is closest together all right at this time you may want to just cut down the thing um but again you're gonna then secure that chicken wire frame all the way around okay you're gonna wrap it with a layer of cardboard or tar paper or roof roofing felt those are those big things that Yes, it's heavy. So if you have a 20, 30 foot tree, yeah. which Ooh. some of them in South Philly are, yeah. are pushing 20 feet easy. They are. So then you're going to take that and then you're going to tape it and then you're going to secure it. Mm-hmm. Now, the roofing, you're going to make sure that you're not using cheap, you know, tape either. You got to yeah. use something you can actually staple it onto one another. Yeah, it's got to be sturdy, right? Yeah. You, you don't want it to unfold unfold Unfold. in the middle of the winter yeah so then this frame that you're building Mm. that you can our area i think we're okay Mm. that the insulation layer is all right but if you're in some of the colder climates people will Mm. fill these with air and shed shredded leaves there you go go. another use for them but uh again (laughs) it's something that you're creating an insulator layer so that you can keep Mm the air within there trapped and right. and think about tar paper right right um it's gonna be black it's gonna hold it's gonna hold the heat you know even when it's colder it's colder yeah you know it's gonna be subject to the ambient temperature oh, for yeah. the most part mm. but it's not gonna necessarily no. transfer to the yeah. buds and to the tree itself right it's gonna repel water too that's right that's right another uh key feature there now Okay, you're still not done. Mm-hmm. This is controversial. Some people want to let water in right. the center of the tree. Mm. I say no. Yeah. Take a five-gallon bucket, and that's going to be your, like, I guess the lunar lander. You know, that's going <laughs> to yeah, right. be the top, the top of, the- of your pyramidal fig tree. Mm. And that's going to keep the water from getting in. Right. Um, also... You know, there, there are issues. If you're putting in leaves, you don't necessarily want the leaves wet, it, yeah, you know, yeah. disease issues. Mm-hmm. Now, that five-gallon bucket on top, you want to secure it so it yeah. doesn't end up becoming a projectile to your <laughs> yeah. neighbor's, you know, windows. Yeah, right. So you need to, to yeah. connect it. So, you know, we have those windy winter oh storms, gosh, those yes. nor'easters right. that all of a sudden are bringing all that snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't want to have, you know, your, 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 p- house. your five-gallon bucket <laughs> in South Philly and then have it cross the river yeah. landing somewhere in New Jersey. <laughs> Um, again, it's, it's important, um, to keep it in layers and you do want to have a little bit of air circulation around, uh, your whole, uh, 
layering that you're doing. You don't sure. want to have it so tight and sealed up. Right. That's uh, inside. Okay, mm -hmm. you you do. Ready? Mm -hmm. You wrap it one more time. Wrap it with burlap. Burlap. You're going to wrap it tight, overlapping it, and that mm -hmm. you you again are going to hold on to that. You've got a layer of chicken wire. You have a layer of um, the the uh, cardboard. Then you have the felt paper, mm -hmm. and then you have burlap. Burlap. Boy. Burlap. It is a project. It is. But for the love of figs, you'll yeah. see it mm -hmm. that some people will are willing to do it. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't do it, what can happen? Mm -hmm. It can freeze and it can die all the way back down to the ground. Right. And then you no longer have a fig tree. tree. You have a fig shrub. <laughs> and it takes a while to grow out of it. Back and so again. you may not get figs for a couple of years. So just keep that in mind, that, mm -hmm. that yeah. the, the freeze can absolutely damage do damage. Yeah. Um, for the first time, we had zero degrees yeah. uh, this past, I think it was this past winter, yeah. uh, surprised me because I can't remember us having it that cold, well, but yeah. it was. It was, it was yeah. definitely cold. Definitely. What if you keep your fig tree in a container? Mm -hmm. Well, you can bring that in, by the way. You can bring it inside uh, indoors. You can keep it in uh, alive all winter long, by the way. It's, uh, and I would recommend that highly. The yeah. tree, you want to... It's going to go in dormancy, okay? So, but is it going to go, like, do you want it, like, in your living room? Or do you want to yeah, put it somewhere I, where it gets some cold? Yeah, you want it to be uh, cold somewhat. and yeah. uh, Like like in your uh, garage. Yeah. Okay? That would be a great place to have it. Yeah. And um, so you want to take it in there. Yeah. And the, and you want it to go dormant. Mm -hmm. But, again, it, it, doesn't has to, it doesn't have to be uh, wrapped up. And, again, nah. anything that's in a container is going to be probably s maybe six feet, yeah, not eight too feet big. at the yeah. most. Easier to contain. Yeah. yeah. And you also, you know, every once in a while when, when the weather has been consistently, like, say, outside in the 40s, that means in your garage it's probably the 50s. 50s yeah. And you're going to want to give it some water. Right. Uh, water the soil. Um, right. cause you really don't want to, um, you don't want it to dry yeah, out because it will yeah. certainly dry out. Mm. And you also, if you can make sure that it's staying in, it does get freezing right. like in like the, nice the like a 32 or, so, or something along those lines, mm. it's fine because you don't want it to start growing yeah. in the house or in a like. Like say you mm. had a sun porch or something right. like that, right. because right. He, what happens yeah, sure. is that when it does go back outside, mm. um, it's going to have some of those freezing nights mm. where we get the frost and all that new growth will be dead. Oh yeah. So it can get burned from the frost, not only a freeze, but mm. if it's if you have it without any leaves, that's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. If you want detailed instructions on how to do this, or you have questions, which I'm sure you do, please call, call us. Bloomers yeah. in the Garden Hotline, okay? Again, that's 609-685-1880. Uh, it's going to be a better production year for your fig Plenty. if you do this. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you'll be coming into Bloomers and say, how come I never get any figs? Right. And it's basically because they freeze. Cold. Yep. They freeze. All right, All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You're invited to celebrate the holiday season with us at Bloomers. We're proud to announce that the Bloomers Holiday Preview Party is back. 
Join us for an evening of festive holiday fun, including a ton of refreshments and festivities all over the store. We've got Higby's Heroes, the acapella quartet, returning to spread holiday cheer through song, bringing joy to both the young and the young at heart. This event is topped off with wine tasting for the 21 and up crowd, special offers, prizes, and more. Join us on Friday, November 18th at 5 p.m. for the Bloomer's Home and Garden Center Christmas Preview Holiday Party. You don't want to miss the biggest event of the season at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center at 344 Herfield Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. For directions or more information, check us out on the web at bloomers.com. And we look forward to celebrating the holiday season with you in the garden. Happy holidays! Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Did you know that 40% of the U.S. population feed uh-huh. wild birds? Wow, that's that's pretty high. That is. And, it, and it's, a, it's one of the most, after gardening, it's one uh-huh. of the most popular... A hobby. Wow, how about that? That's right. That's right. Ooh, wow. If you mm. feed the birds, you're mm. going to hear some things you may know already. But if you don't feed the birds, we've got some good advice on how to get started so you don't get frustrated. Mm. Julio, this isn't, you, you're going to, you ready? You're going to get the right qu- answer? I don't okay. know. Right? Yeah, go ahead. What is the most problematic thing about feeding the birds? The most problematic thing I would, I would think that it would be when you feed the birds all the, the shells, all the shells that come f- falling down and makes a mess of your lawn. Give that man a cigar. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know I don't smoke. <laughs> I, I I, the shells. Right. I just just really drive me crazy. Oh yeah, I've they really do. And yeah. and like I have my and it's probably because I have my bird feeders that are on my deck. On your deck. So yeah. then if I'm giving like say regular black oil, you know, sunflower, sunflower seeds, seeds yeah. all of those seeds are are sitting on my deck. Oh, I hate hate that drives me crazy. And you don't even like to rake. <laughs> and I don't like to rake. I don't like to pick up seeds. I know. I, I'm pretty lazy when it comes right down to it. Um uh, the thing that uh, you do is you feed them with sunflower hearts, and it is more expensive. But think about this, folks. All those shells that you see in black oil sunflower, that they are taking up airspace in the bag that you buy. So if it has that shell, that if you peel that shell away, there are actually as many or more seeds, certainly in the more seeds, in a bag of the hold sunflower seeds than there are in a bag, a big bag of black oil sunflower. Now, and the point is, is that it attracts all birds, yeah. all birds. Yeah. You'll get woodpeckers, cardinals, oh, you'll get, uh, you'll get... Name, well, unfortunately, yeah. for, for some people, they'll get blue jays, blue jays yeah. but they'll also get like uh, small, like chickadees and nut hatches. That it yeah. attracts everything. Everybody. I get goldfinch. You get I get goldfinch wow. that are that are coming to my feeders and, that? and eating that. Mm-hmm. And that it's it's important that you look for a shellless mix or a porch or patio mix. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and yes, it is going to be more expensive. And everything you see in sales is like, yes, we've got black oil sunflower, 50 pounds for $22. $22 yeah, uh, look, you can buy that if you want, but get ready to have a mess underneath yeah. your feeders. And you're going to have to go up there and rake and well, you can clean, clean it up it or up. you can leave it go and yeah. it can compost and, yeah, you, could you know, that. track roads. roads. I said it. <laughs> I said it. All right. <laughs> so... I, I encourage everybody to go out and, and get a shellless mix. That's, That's first. Right. Um, second, your feeder. There are some feeders that aren't going to attract the server. Like everybody loves cardinals. Yeah. Cardinals like to perch when they eat. Now, definitely. If they you don't have a perch there, you'd have just a tube feeder that again, they they want to grab onto something. They're almost like a clinger. But for instance, our my favorite feeder is is the Brome oh, Squirrel yeah. Proof Feeder. That's the one I have. Squirrels it's is beautiful. This may, squirrels may be another program. That's a, <laughs> that's another show. Yeah, it is. But they drive squirrels drive me crazy. Uh, but they have on their uh, feeder where you have a ring mm. specifically for cardinals, so that it can go and the cardinals can sit on so, there, so they have a place to go, and it's called a cardinal ring. Cardinal ring. Uh, clingers. If, if there are natural clingers, what they do is they they will jump on a tree and they they will climb, hop, hop up and down like a downy woodpecker, for instance, is certainly a clinger. And other varieties of clingers are of uh, woodpeckers, like I just said, uh, titmouse, chickadees, nuthatches. They're at my favorite birds actually because oh, yeah, they, they're small, they're cute, uh, yeah. they're, they're not obnoxious like uh, blue jays. Yep. Um, but Shirley, our wild bird expert at Bloomer, she got into birds. She from New Zealand. She saw a blue jay, and she was hooked after that. After that, because they are beautiful. They are, yeah, they are beautiful. But again, mm -hmm. um, cardinals. We're, we we'll go back to cardinals real quick. Cardinals like to sneak up on the feeder, uh -huh. where they like yeah. to be actually kind of hidden, protected in like a little brush. And then they don't see nobody around, and they jump on the jump feeder on the, from yeah. there. So they're always hopping from the ground to the oh, feeder. Yeah. They don't fly directly and land Into on it. the feeder. Yeah. Uh, just, just saying. Mm -hmm. So, and cardinals uh, again, safflower is uh, mm -hmm. is detestable to squirrels. Good, mm -hmm. um, and where the cardinals love safflower. So if you want to stop your squirrels from eating your bird feed. Try safflower, and then you won't have the problems, but you're going to have shells. I'm just, just, just saying. Mm -hmm. um, there's hot meats. Well, there, can you explain to me what that is? That will deter your squirrels because it has, um, what's that uh, called? Capsian Caps pepper. Pepper, yeah. The pepper, it's that red pepper. And, well, how um, come it deters the squirrels mm -hmm. and not the birds? Well, I know the answer. Their glands, they, they don't. Uh, have saliva glands. Yeah, they don't like that. Yeah, so they can't. Like birds don't have saliva glands where yeah. squirrels do. They do. Yeah, they so will, they get, you they know, mouth hot. of Mexican yeah. where the <laughs> yeah, birds right. don't. Yeah, where yeah, birds yeah. don't. So. Jumping out and uh, yeah. <laughs> get some water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we are, there's, we're going to have the next few weeks segments on birds mm -hmm. and that this is a very general one. But if you're going to do one thing, go out and buy hold. Okay. Sunflower, most of the time you'll see sunflower meats or sunflower hearts, and put that in your feeder and wait till you see the wide range of birds that you get. All right. Anything uh, to add, Julio? No. Not, not now. Not now? No, later. Wait till next week. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden.
You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Ashcombe Farm and Greenhouses, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. If you haven't pruned or sheared your shrubs yet, <laughs> right, we're not going to get on you at all. <laughs> right, Len? That's right. In fact, right. we'll give you a couple of weeks to wait. <laughs> and it's a good reason. It's, it is. As you heard uh, that uh, we have a Christmas event. It Christmas is. is coming. It is. Christmas is coming. And and so what that means is that you can use the evergreen boughs from your trees that you would be shearing off and use them for your Christmas decorations. Use them for winter pots. Use them for other things. I mean, buried juniper is oh, look, looks goodness. incredible yeah. right now. Magnolia, mm. unbelievable. Beautiful. Magnolia, shiny green leaves. Mm. Deciduous berries like winterberry, holly, oh. and purple beautyberry. Oh. you got to be careful with some of them. For one, you're competing with the birds because the birds are going to want to eat them. Mm. But also, if they freeze, they have a tendency to drop. Drop off. Yeah. So if it's you do you. cut some early, what you want to do is keep them in water. Treat them like yeah. they're a cut flower. Cut flower yeah. And that they'll hold up. But uh, you don't want to have premature berry drop. That's <laughs> for sure. House. That's a problem. <laughs> it is. Uh, all your hollies. Mm -hmm. Again, holly uh, bunches, eight bucks for a small bunch of holly. Oh, so you've got to make sure that you're... Being economical, you could yeah. create. You know, do, you, do you know what a daddy burger is? <laughs> do you eat that? <laughs> no. Well, I might. Well, we just said this is a daddy burger. Uh -huh. A daddy burger is a mix of greens. Okay. That it's blue spruce. It's uh, usually it has some incense cedar and some Ooh. other. I mean, you could make your own daddy burgers. Oh, like Who doesn't that. want that? Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. You don't eat it, okay? <laughs> Just making it clear. But right. it's very decorative, very yeah. pretty, great yeah. colors together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, good. again, put it off for, for a couple of weeks. Your plants aren't going to mind yeah. at this point. Um, you know, you're, we're like we've said in the past shows, don't cut back <laughs> your hydrangeas. No. Don't cut back your lilacs. No. We're talking about plants, mostly evergreen conifers, um, and a few of the deciduous buried holly, okay? Yeah. Anything to add, Hull? No, I, I like that burger, though. They like a daddy <laughs> burger? Give daddy me a good burger. daddy burger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Yeah. So next time you're at your local garden center, ask them if they have daddy burgers. Yeah, they They'll will. know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. We're going to break. We'll be right back right after this.
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. See me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. We We're down here Schooled again. again on figs. Oh, oh tell my you gosh. Oh. You got a fig tree, and you mm-hmm. cover it every year. I want to hear from you. That's right. I want to know your method. Call mm-hmm. the hotline, 609-685-1880. That's right. Hey, next time you go, uh, go to uh, Bloomer's Home and Garden Center uh, hotline or... You call, you know, calling us. You can always go to our uh, platforms, okay? Bloomers.com and visit us on the radio tab. So don't forget, YouTube. See us on YouTube. That's right. Want to see Aaron? Uh, I know. Oh yes. Yeah, Aaron's the handsome one. <laughs> yeah, he's the best looking guy here. <laughs> Me and Julio are the old guys. That's right. No hair. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I wear a hat. That's right. <laughs> anyway, go to YouTube and please subscribe. Uh, each week we've got videos and you can see what we look like in the studio and you can see our hand gestures. I do. You can see and understand <laughs> me more. Right. I talk with my hands. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you right here the same time next week, right in the garden. See you in the garden.